In this video, we will learn the story of Turkmen people. Why do Turkmens live in wide area? How and where do they spread? How Turkmenistan was established and what is the current situation of it? And you will understand that Turkmenistan is a homeland for all Turkmens in the world. Earlier, the Turkmen called themselves Oguzus, cause they live it in the country of Oguz. The country was founded by Oguz people who came from Mongolia to Central Asia, but most of the inhabitants lived here long before the foundation of the state. In the 10th century, the people started to migrate from country. Some of them went to the west after the borders of Byzantine Empire. Russian chroniclers call those Oguzus as Turks and Berendays. Gagauzus in Eastern Europe are their descendant. Others migrated to south. From those in commerce to the territory of Turkmenistan, the Turkmen nation will be born. All Turks who accepted Islam were called Turkmen. It's said that Tajiks began to name for nomads. In the Oasis of North Khorasan, the ancient name of southern Turkmenistan, the Turks were rare. When Oguzus migrate here massively, they put themselves in opposition to the local sedentary people. Due to the confrontation of cultures, Turkmen began to rally to a political union as opponents of Tajiks. This is how the Turkmens are born. In this situation, clan of Seljukis unites the Turkmens in the creation of their own state. Later, when Turkmens will conquer the Middle East, the political name Turkmen will be active for the rallying of tribe in the opposition to the Christian world. In the paintings and drawings of those times, the portraits of Seljukids were Mongoloid. According to eyewitnesses, Oguzus giant Kumuis had small horses that were consumed for meat and used their skins as clothes. And this culture is identical with the culture of all other Turkic Mongolian peoples of Eurasia. Thus, it is clear that they were incomers from Altai. But the ancestors of Turkmen differed from them, even in the races. After the founding of the state of the Seljukids, Turkmens get the attention of Muslim scholars, and they were try to explain this difference. Some said the Turkmens are Oguzus, but because of the climate in Central Asia, they looked like Tajiks in appearance. Others said that the Turkmens were a mixture of Oguzus and Khorasanians. But it was not important anyhow. People who came from Altai and Central Asian nomads acted as a single political union. Turkmen who participated in the creation of the state among Oguzus are not Turkmens of Turkmenistan, but those who left for Caucasus and the Middle East. After the conquest of Persia, Seljukids exhausted the experience of governing of states from settlements. And to attract the Iranian nobility to their side, they considered themselves descendants of Turanian ruler Afrasyab. In 1055, having conquered Baghdad, they will put a religious identity in priority and will struggle against the enemies of Sunni Islam. Therefore, the state created by the Turkmens ceases to be Turkmenian. But the Turkmens themselves did not aim to rallying either. In the conquests, the tribal leaders put their clan goals in priority than the construction of a common state for the Turkmen. Turkmens will be in hegemony in the Middle East after the rise of Kazalbashis in Persia and the Ottoman Empire in Turkey, but all the states created by them were known by name of clan or tribe who founded it. In those states, the Turkmen mass did not act as a major nation that defines its culture, but they were only as warriors playing the role of repressive machine. By time, the top of the tribes, which were related to the local elite, retained their privileged position, but for common people, the fate was ambivalent. Even though they were a dominant race, on the other hand, they were the object of mockery from side of Greeks, Syrians, Persians and Armenians. 
For them, Turkmens are naive nomads who are easy to fool. The Ottomans, educated in Arabic, Persian and Byzantine cultures, began to look down at the rest of the Turkmens. After the dynasty, the religious, feudal nobility, and then all the urban inhabitants of Asia Minor saw the Turk with disregard. From mix of incomers from East and local population, they have occurred Azerbaijani and Turkish nations. Terekeme or Karapapaks, the ethnic subgroup of Azerbaijanis, are descendants of Turkmen or Guzus that once created the Karakuin Lu and Akkoil empires. Yuruks in Turkey are descendants of Turkmens too. Although Turkmens who did not assimilate it lives as large diasporas in Syria, Iraq and Turkey. Oguzus, along with them, the Turkmens were also expanding eastward. Later, they became related with Karakitais and then disappeared among Mongols. Another part of the eastern Turkmens, led by the Halaj tribe, went to India. But here, the Turkmens unavoidably assimilated. The chief of Halaj tribe, Bakhtiar, and his descendants conquered Bengal and became their first Muslim rulers. In the 1290s to 1320s, the Turkmens for a short time ruled all over India. One of the gates of Delhi called it Turkmen, as a reminder of that period. Part of the Turkmen Salis in 1370s went to the Chinese Turkestan. Their descendants live in Gansu province of China. Turkmens of Uzbekistan, who did not live for China, became similar to the local population and listed as a Turkoman tribe of Uzbeks. This Nurata Turkmen people lives in this region from the Seljuk period. When the Mongols destroyed the Konurgenj irrigation system, part of the Amudarya river bed turns over to the Kuzboy river, and Turkmens who stayed in Khorasan from the 14th to the 16th century will gather in western Turkmenistan in the conditions created by Uzboy River. In the 16th century, Amudarya again changes its course, and the Uzboy begins to dry up. Khan of Khwarezm was also involved in that, and the pressure from the Nogais, Kalmyks, Kazakhs from Steppes, and the Uzbeks from Khwarezm was another reason to get out of here. In the 17th and the 19th century, some Turkmen from Mangishla Peninsula migrate to the Staropol region and the Astrakhan region in Russia. Others will move to the Owais of Turkmenistan. After the resettlement, the Turkmen end up in different countries. Persia, Hiva, Bukhara and Durrani state in Afghanistan. In these states, the Turkmen served as a warriors, from whom the power of the ruling dynasty often depended. At the same time, the Turkmen tribes begin to fight each other for the best pastures and oases. For this, they often resorted to the help of the neighbor. But for neighboring states themselves wanted to expand their borders, and therefore Turkmenistan was a territory of wars between Uzbeks and Persians too. Mahzemuli Prari dreamed that the Turkmen would serve one state, because this is how Turkmen will have a common goal for unification. In his poem, The Korbollu Kyashamaz, he indicates Kemal Khan Afghan. Many Turkmen of that time saw in the gang strengths of the Afghan Empire worthy rivals of Uzbeks and Persians. Accordingly, many Turkmen wanted to join them. But unfortunately, this will not happen. In 11th century, a powerful tribe of Western Turkmenistan was Yazirs. In the 14th century, until the 16th century, the Ersari, along with the Salirs and Sholdurs, became the major tribes. In inter-tribal war, in the period of the resettlement, the most successful among the Turkmens were Yomuts, Sariks and Teke. Earlier in the Balkan, they were small tribes living under the influence of Salirs and Ersari. But by the 19th century, they were turning into hegemonies which had the largest territories. In the 1850s, the Teke overcame the Uzbeks twice, and in 1861, in the Battle of Merv, they defeated the Persians, and thus 
they turn it into the most powerful tribe among the Turkmens. At the beginning of the 19th century, Turkmens living on the shores of the Caspian Sea became Russian subjects voluntarily. During the conquest of Hiva, the Russians are convinced that the main force here was the Turkmen. If they want to conquer this territory, then it is necessary to conquer the Turkmen. So, in 1873, at the instances of Khan Hiva, Russians went on demonstrational expedition against the Khwarazmian Turkmen. And when Turkmen were defeated, Hiva became Russian vassals. The Teke, protected geographically from the Russians, thought that they would not be defeated. Indeed, in the first occultic expedition, Teke overcomes their aliens. But the Russians in the second expedition take into account their failures, come carefully prepared. They begin to build the Transcaspian Railroad for transportation of provisions, also buys a huge amount of provision in Persia. They were also helped by all the Turkmen previously conquered or dissatisfied with the Teke because of oppression. As a result, in 1881, after the capture of the fortress of Göktepe, the Akal Oasis joins the Russian Empire. In the same year, Salis and Sarix voluntarily joined the Russians too. In 1884, the Murftekes joined it too. Even Russians came to make a colony. Joining the Russian Empire became a very important moment in the formation of the Turkmen nation. First, tribes began to live in one area, and the same economic and political field under the protectorate of a strong power as they wanted earlier. In 1884, the Transcaspian region was created, where all Turkmen's lived. Russia considered them to be the main ethnos of this region. Therefore, in 1921, the Transcaspian region was renamed into the Turkmen region. Second, accession brought peace to the territory of Turkmenistan. Kiva and Bukhara were Russian vassals so they were no longer threat. Iran too could not fight against Russia, so it could not claim to these territories too. Third, before, Turkmen's were heavily dependent on water, and the sources were from neighbors. Neighbors did not think about Turkmen's and used it themselves, and sometimes even punished the Turkmen, covering them from water. So Turkmen's often raided their neighbors. After the Battle of Göktepe between Russia and Iran, an agreement was concluded, according to which all the rivers that go from Iran to Turkmenistan the Persians could not use. At the end of the 19th, at the beginning of the 20th century, the idea of Pan-Turkism became popular among Turkish nationalists and Tatar nationalists. Gradually it spreads among Turkmen. The idea of Turkmen nationalism is formed from the idea of Pan-Turkism. Turkmen Çelik, think like a Turkmen, the Turkmen language, it's a common tradition and customs. And in the Tsarist period, the children of Khans and rich people who received European education began to publish books and newspapers where they write about nationalism. Soviet people to remove the popularity of Pan-Turkism whose supporters were eager for the Turkestan Federation, and the pan-Islamism that connect the Central Asia with its neighbors decides attract supporters of nationalism to their side. But after the power of the Soviet Union is affirmed, in the 1930s, nationalists are being rid of by repression. The mention of the term nation was taboo. In the 30s, the question of banning certain poems of Prague is raised when nation, Turkmen nation is mentioned. The authors are persecuted, newspapers and magazines are closed, which mentions the word nation in works. In the Soviet Union, in the fight against nationalism, the telpek of men, yashmak scarves worn by married women were forbidden. There was a criminal penalty for Kalim and Gaitarma. In the 60s, 70s, they talked about appearance of the Soviet people. But in fact, it was not so. In Central Asia, traditions in life of people played the most important role until the collapse of USSR. During the Soviet era, 
Turkmenistan remained an extremely backward republic. On the one hand, the Turkmen ally did not want modernization. They were afraid to lose traditions and national clothes, and the Turkmen saw them as part of their national identity. On the other hand, Soviet government did not aim this either. They feared the rise of nationalism. In the 20th century, Turkmen society was transformed from a tribal society into a clan-land society. If in the Middle Ages the Turkmen clans were built by blood and the leaders of the clan were considered its founders, respectively older people, but in the Soviet era clans were built on the marriage union. The leaders were not the oldest person, but the one who had the most influence and wealth, that is, having high positions in government. Thus, such clans that were building in 20th century can be divided by regions Akhal, Lebab, Mari, Balkan, Tijan, etc. Although, I must say that nation forming is just begun. Some people, especially from older generation, still define Turkmenness according to the tribal trade which dates back to the Oguz Khan. With the getting of independence, Turkmenchilik is being restored at the state level. There appears the national holidays and traditions that were banned in Soviet period. In the ideology of independent Turkmenistan, it said that the Turkmen were originally one nation with an ancient experience of statehood. But because of external enemies, the Turkmen lost that unity. Therefore, they must return to their origins. How? To do this, they need to become anew by uniting the tribes. On the way to returning to origin, the spirit of Turkmen Moshi will unite them. Even when he himself dies physically, as a spirit he will live forever and will protect Turkmen in the future. With gaining independence, power passes to the Akalteka clan, to which the first president belongs. They don't want to share the power with all the Turkmen. Therefore, Turkmenistan is a unitary state of the Stalinist type, because the only experience of statehood of southern Turkmen. Where 75% of all high posts in the state are occupied by people from the Ashgabat region.